Okay, so the introduction to graphing um, sinusoidal functions or trig functions is we're going to just look at what is a periodic function. So the first thing we have to know is a periodic function is a function that continuously will continuously repeats itself around a central oh what's a bad r central axis okay so one complete pattern of a periodic function is called a period Okay, now a period is always the distance between two similar points. So it's the distance between two similar points on the graph. The distance between two similar points. I guess we should, they would be identical, but they're not identical based on their x values. Okay, so points on the graph. Okay, a lot of the times we say it's the start or the finish of a function or a cycle. Um, for instance, here we have one period starting here and ending here. But we could also look at the period is here to here. That's one period. Or here to here. Okay, that's one period. It's a length. It's a distance. Okay, a cycle is like if you were talking about a merry-go-round going around in a circle one time. That's one cycle. But a length of the cycle, we can measure that anywhere. Okay, so looking at these examples, so we've got I, I. Actually, why don't we do this? We're going to just make a quick chart here for these graphs. All right. Good enough. Okay, so the first graph. Determine whether it's periodic. This one is periodic. It's continuously repeating. Okay, it's a very easy one to see. The second one is periodic as well. Um, it's just an irregular shape, but it doesn't mean that it's not continuously repeating. Okay, if you started here and started here and started here, you're going to see the same thing over and over and over again. The last one's not periodic because the value from the top to the bottom of the graph is continuously changing. Okay, so we're done that. The second one, state the period. So if we're looking at this cycle here, the graph, we're looking for one spot on the graph to a similar point. Now some people would go to this value because it's both equal to 12. But that's not actually similar because the graph is going down here and going up here. So we need a point at 12 hours that it's going down again. So one cycle is happening from here to here or one period. So the period here is 365 days. Okay, or one year. Okay, now the same thing's happening here. Now I've already marked them out, so we can see from here to here is, what is it, six seconds. Okay, now we can't do this one because we don't actually know. You could look and argue that, what is it, it's getting about one and a half seconds, I guess, but it's changing, so we, we're not going to worry about that one. We'll just write NA for the whole thing. Okay, because it's not a periodic function, we're not really worried about it. Okay, the equation of the axis, so the period, is the length of a cycle. Okay, the equation of the axis is the central axis, so the axis that the graph is revolving around. So axis, the graph... is 
is, we'll, we'll say revolving or rotating around. Rotating around. Okay, so that first graph, if we look at it, it's kind of actually going up and down around this point right here. Okay, because it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes back down, back up, and so on. So it's constantly going around that. So our equation of our axis here is y equals 12, or 12 hours. Okay, the equation of the axis in the next one, and the way you actually mathematically find this is what you're going to do is you're going to take your bottom point in this next one, so the equation of the axis, Oh, that's just crunched together pretty good. Axis equals your minimum plus your max divided by 2. Okay, it's just the average of them. So in this case, we've got negative 6 plus 1 over 2, which is negative 5, negative 2.5. Okay, so that's happening right there. And if you look, it actually makes sense. When I draw that line, you can clearly see that the graph kind of goes above that line and below that line with the same amount. Now finally, the amplitude is the distance from the equation of the axis to the top or bottom. So distance from the middle of the graph from the middle to the top or bottom. Okay, it's just a scalar value so it can always be a positive number, but it doesn't matter if you make it negative. So in the first one, we're just looking from here to here. You can see it on the graph here. We've got 12 minus 6. The difference between 12 and 6 is 6. Okay, and it could be positive or negative. The second one, we can take your maximum, kind of a formula again, if you wanted to find your amplitude, is your max minus the equation of the axis. Or you could do your equation of the axis minus your minimum. So in this case, we've got 1 minus negative 2.5, which is equal to 3.5. Okay, and that is that. All right, looking at this, so just kind of another example. So is this a periodic function? Yes, it is. It's continuously repeating itself. Our maximum number is 10. Our minimum number is 2. So maximum value is 10, minimum value is 2. Okay, another way to find the amplitude is just take your maximum minus your minimum and divide it by 2. Okay, maximum minus minimum here would be 10 minus 2 is 8 over 2, and that's going to equal to 4. Now if I go 4 down from the top or 4 up from the bottom, I should get to the equation of my axis, okay, which in this case I do. All right, so if we look at now f equals 2, a lot of people will be like, oh, Mr. Shaw, I don't know the equation. Well, really all you need to do is look at your graph at 2. f equals 2, we're at 5, okay, and it would be a rough answer here. Now, what we actually have to look at, though, for what values does f at x equal 5? Well, it's not just 2. It is x equals 2, but it's also happening at x equals 4. It's also happening at 6. It's happening at 8. And every number, we could go to 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, okay, and it's just going to keep going on that way. So every two numbers. 
So what we actually need to do to find something like f at 33, which isn't on the graph, is find a value that's going to be close to 33, or a value that's going to be the same within this graph. So if I were to choose that first cycle, okay, so we know that, I'm just going to erase a little bit here, we know that this graph revolves around y equals 6. That's the equation of our axis. The period of the graph is 4. Okay, so every four numbers, it's repeating itself. So the first quarter is at 10. The starting point, sorry, is at 6. The first quarter is at 10. The next quarter, or the halfway point, is at 6 again. The next quarter is at 3. And the last number is back at 6. So if we were to look at this, we need to find where does 33 match in. Well, the way we can do that is we can say 33 divided by my period. Well, my period is 4. The only reason I can do this is because I'm starting at 0. Okay, If I'm not starting at 0, it is a little bit harder, but I can still make it work. Okay, So 33 divided by 4 is going to give me 8.25. Well, what that means is that 33 is 8 cycles in, or 8 periods down the line, and then it's 1 quarter of the way through the next period. So f at 33 is going to be the same as f at 1, because 1 is 1 quarter of the way through. Well, f at 1 is equal to 10, and now I know that f at 33 is equal to 10. Okay, what I've done is I've created this cycle eight cycles to the right, okay, and that's helped me find f at 33. I need to be able to relate the cycles together to solve these. All right, in our last example, this is probably the most common trigonometry um, question. If we're looking at a Ferris wheel, Ferris wheels and tidal questions are the most common. Okay, so what is the period of this function and what does it represent? Well, if I go to the bottom and go to the bottom here, I can easily see the period is 8. I could have done it here and here. I could have done it here and here and saw that as well, or here and here. There, I'll kind of put a bunch. Okay, so the period here is 8. And we'll call it, I don't know, seconds. We'll call this time. We'll put it in seconds. Okay, and what that is telling us is the amount of time to do one revolution of the, it's a Ferris wheel, one revolution of the Ferris wheel. Oh, revolution is not spelled like that. There we go, one revolution. Revolution. There we go. Um, one revolution of the Ferris wheel. Okay, what is the equation of the axis? The equation of the axis is y equals 4, or 4 meters. Okay, what's the amplitude? Well, the amplitude, distance from the middle to the bottom or the middle to the top, it doesn't really matter, is going to give us 3. So 3 meters. At what times is Trevor at the top? Well, he's at the top at 4 seconds, 12 seconds, and what's that, 20? So 4, 12, and 20. And we'll just look, and this is all in seconds, We'll just look at the graph, which is on the page here. What's the diameter of this Ferris wheel? Okay, and this is where a lot of people go wrong, is they forget the Ferris wheels don't scrape the ground, okay? So you have to step up into the Ferris wheel. So if I just look at the top to the bottom, that's the diameter of the Ferris wheel. If you think of, let's say we're on a Ferris wheel. Right now we're on the bottom, and as we travel, around that Ferris wheel, we go up to the top, and that distance, bottom to top, is it, and then we go back down to the bottom. So our graph of height is up to the top, back down to the bottom, okay? But the diameter is the difference between the top and the bottom of the graph. So here, we've got seven meters is at the top, one meter at the bottom, so the diameter of this Ferris wheel is six meters. Okay, you're gonna have to look at questions like that 
just kind of feel out how the question is and actually understand the question before you can answer some of these. And there's some questions in the textbook.